you guys, back again with another video. Well, today, you guys, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing. It's such a crap day outside today. What annoys me when it's really bad outside, you just want to stay at home and just be lazy and just do whatever you want to do. But that's the annoying thing, you guys. I just hate doing that stuff. The reason why I do videos is because I like talking. I feel like I have something to say, and I feel like there's so many people out there that have something to say or that learn new things and they could share it. But and I know they have probably way more things than me, but they don't do it. There's a video by Gary V. He's a really good YouTuber, guys. It's not even a YouTuber, he's even wrote a book. I'm gonna buy his book soon, I'm gonna read it, it looks good. The person he is, he's, he's very interesting, he's very like straightforward, he's very motivating guy. And there's a video that I'll, I'll link in the description, watch it, and he says, look, when you have content, when you have something to say, just say it, just put it out there. When you're thinking about when you wanna do things, how you wanna do things, or right now is not the right time, you're gonna do it when you have free time, or you're planning it too much, he says, no, don't do that. I mean, even my book review on Grant Cardone, 10X, don't wait till you have free time, or when you have a good camera and you have good lighting whatever it is that you want to do it might not be videos i mean it might be something else that you're holding off just don't hold it off Grant Cardone says in his book commit now think about the rest later just do whatever you can now you know i might i might be absolutely crap and shit at making videos you guys might not want to bloody watch my videos it probably just comes with, it, it probably just comes in your bloody feed and you just like go oh, off that rian guy man what the is he talking about nah let's just go and press his you know video let's just watch it but i might be crap at what i do and i'm not saying i'm the best either but i just genuinely like talking and i'm sure that comes out as i talk it comes out it's not like someone's put a gun to my head it's just something that i like to do but when i'm around people i like listening see that's the great thing about reading and stuff like that or when you're around people you listen to people they always say good speakers are also good listeners i mean i don't know if you've ever heard of that but i'm not saying i'm a good speaker but that's the reason why i do videos because i like sharing i like talking you guys anyway coming back to what i really wanted to talk I want to talk about the idea of psychology. Obviously, I've been researching psychology. I've had an interest in psychology forever right now. Even while I've been studying science, I've always had an interest in psychology. I should have studied psychology, but like, you know, if you see my science video, you'd see why I didn't want to do psychology. But I mean, people that who do psychology and stuff like that, I'm not putting it off. Or if you want to do psychology, go ahead. It's very interesting. But interesting is not enough for me to do an actual degree and pay like in, in the UK, I think it's £9,000 a year. That is a lot of money to be paying for something that you're just interested in i don't know i mean to become a psychologist it takes longer i'm not saying it's a bad career you guys i mean you know cut all that shit out i just want you to do a science course you know i also like science as i've studied science and i believe i'm more of a science student than a psychology student but i'm interested in psychology can those two combine psychology and science believe it or not like some psychologists claim that psychology is a science but psychology can be seen as a social science do psychologists want psychology to be seen as a science and if so i mean you guys let me all know because i don't know what I've read so far is yeah, there's like schools of thought within psychology itself. Some psychologists like to think that psychology is a science. Some think that no, science is a reductionist sort of way think, and that's what I wanted to come to. Being a student of science, am I a reductionist? Do I reduce everything? So what essentially reductionism is, it's like when a psychologist they actually say that look, we can't understand everything through science because psychology is very complex. What we essentially do, the meaning of reductionism is we reduce things to like simple like in science we'll try and reduce things to the most simple matter to understand it but when it comes to psychology we can't do that we have to look at it in a holistic sort of way we can't reduce it to the atoms and the neurons and you know neurochemical pathways it's not just simple chemicals such as serotonin and dopamine like i was talking about earlier we can't just reduce it to simple components like that psychology is way more deep than that it's way more complex than that we have to take a holistic view so that's why i say that look if i'm coming at it at a scientific way too much of a scientific basis then then essentially what I am is a reductionist. I'm looking at psychology in a reductionist way. The stuff that I've read is 50-50 to be honest because they say some things need science, some things it's more complex than science itself. If you really think about it, it's true. Like consciousness, we know we have a consciousness, clearly we do. But how do you explain that in scientific terms? I mean, you guys let me know, but there's clearly more than science. If we just say that this atom and this neuron connecting to this motor neuron makes your conscious all work, I don't believe that to be the case. I believe sometimes taking a holistic view rather than taking a reductionist view you have a more broad concept of psychology itself it's just enlightening we should adapt to different ways of thinking psychology is very important to all of us the way we think to reduce it all the way just to simple components such as neurons chemicals neurotransmitters serotonin dopamine hormones i know they play a part you guys some psychologists even argue do they really play a part or is it just a correlation is it the fact that just because the serotonin's there at the same time you're happy it doesn't establish a cause and effect basically 
activity doesn't mean serotonin causes happiness. It just means that they occur at the same time. It could be happiness that causes serotonin, not serotonin that causes happiness. It's just debatable. I'm sure there are very good evidence and empirical evidence supporting the fact that serotonin and dopamine clearly do work because I do know that serotonin reuptake blockers neurons that take up serotonin again once this release but I know there's medicine and drugs out there that stop serotonin being taken up again so serotonin lost more in your body but I know they scientifically and clinically they work but is it really that working or is it really the mind again is it really the placebo what placebo really means guys it's like when you start thinking the pill is working but the pill could be anything so yeah it could be the placebo you guys anyway it's just something to think about you know maybe don't take the reduction experience maybe take a holistic view put science on the side for a bit and just look at psychology as a form of its own subject it's just what I was thinking about anyway I hope you take something out of this you guys hopefully that enlightened you guys do something new maybe you've heard of it maybe you haven't heard of it maybe you've learned something new I don't know you guys whatever I read I share you guys whatever I find interesting I will always share so if you take something out of this obviously that's just great anyway guys I will see you guys later I'm never gonna let you go never gonna say goodbye